welcome back everyone to Wellstopia and today we are going to work on the carpenter's house and workshop. Yes, I did say that we're probably going to be starting out with the warehouse, but I think the carpenter's place would be much more suitable because I have a great deal of wood to take down and while I will probably have some wood stored at the warehouse, a better place to have a great deal of it will be at the carpenter's house. So I'll go there, have a workshop for the carpenter, and a house there, and that could be my new base of operations because this mine is getting a little bit cramped, and I am getting tired of running back and forth between here and there because that could be a bit of a hike. Yeah, if I go straight south, I could get there fairly quickly, but that means a little bit of swimming or of course perhaps instead a little bit of boating in in place of that so I think it's almost a straight shot to where I want to place this now I did build a wall here which is at the perimeter of the village that's, of course, to keep out nasties from getting inside from the wilderness out here. And I did a bit of clearing. So I thought that the best place to put the carpenter's home and workshop would be right here at this point. Because we have this little bit of a narrows here. So here we have the small craft. Here we well, I guess technically the fishing boats are also small craft, maybe. Okay, the tiny craft here, the small craft here. And we could have them over there. Let's see. This. Try to find a good place to put a bed temporarily. So I could reset my respawn pointer here. I've been always going back and forth through the cave, not using a temporary bed, so that if I got killed, I wouldn't be sent all the way back to Spawn Town. So I've been trying to make sure that I only slept at my bed there. So if I make a new bed here, as long as I don't break it, I should be fine. Or if I do break it, make sure I sleep at the other location first. But the idea here is I thought that since this is where we're going to be build our craft, and we could have a place where we could launch because this is not only going to be a carpentry shop this is also going to be a little bit of a shipyard well boat yard at least and that's where we're going to make all our stuff and it'll be a good first build I have a few small necessities to start my workshop area but of course this is going to grow and eventually I have a proper room for each of these items and I also have a smaller scale map where I could show everything and that way I could look at my progress and see how it is overhead now what I need to do is to lay out my work area for my carpenter and also of course build a work shed and a house and any other necessities we may have and this will be our first significant part of salt marsh one of the matters I must consider is what is the minimal safe depth that we have for our fishing boats now for our tiny craft for our skiffs and launches and stuff like that in other words classic minecraft boats you need only one block as you can see here, one block is more than sufficient. So any water block works and there's absolutely no trouble getting over anything that appears to be water. For the fishing boats, I'm going to assume that three meters, three blocks, would be sufficient for that. So therefore that's what I'm going to want. And that's why the main fishing boats don't come this way because here this little inlet is only two blocks deep at most and even then we have many parts that are only one block deep 
that this is only where the smallest of the craft normally go. Therefore, we are out here where we're going to have our main area in here. And we have two concerns here. One is all of this kelp. And while we could say that the boats could get through without any trouble, I would also think that maybe we have some crews here that work daily in order to keep the kelp at bay and harvest the higher stalks. And that will be a supplemental food source. That will be the vegetable material to go with the pumpkin pie and with the fish. And those three together make their main part of it. So these would be their greens, their kelp here. So I'll do quite a bit of harvesting here. I don't know if these are going to grow back or not. But the idea here is to bring these down so that... And apparently we have some river dolphins here also. Oh yeah, they like to play with things. They said, oh! And there are also some squid here. I don't think I've gotten any black ink yet in this place. If I could find that squid. Where is it? Got no black ink? Ah. Of course, occasionally they don't. Oh, there it is. No, that's kelp. <laughs> the dolphin's playing with it. Ah. My main reason for bringing that up is, of course, this little watered hazard. Because as long as this ship is down here it's a hazard for the fishing boats you don't bring ships into this area right now since the draft here that we need is going to be three meters any wood here that is going to be above that line is going to have to be removed so we want to make sure that we have three water blocks above everything and I could perhaps use the jungle wood here as touch-ups for some locations in fact I suspect that the carpenter and perhaps the carpenter's family oopsie daisy spends some time harvesting this for some extra partly for some extra wood and partly to help to reduce the water hazard that you have in the area. Because if you're going to do something, you might as well get, oops, two benefits out of it. So it's time for me to do some chopping away. And there you go. I removed all of the wood that was above the three meter mark. This means then that the fishing boats will be able to safely traverse in and out of this place. Now you may be wondering why don't I just harvest it all? After all, this is my only source for spruce and jungle wood within this area. I've got oak, I've got birch, down that way I've got dark oak, no, no acacia, and no spruce or jungle that's growing. Why not just harvest it all? And that's because they decided to leave it here as testimony to say, don't bring your ships up the river. That's what will happen to you if you do. Here are our borders. And we'll see whether or not I have to move them as I go along. And inside here I'll need the carpenter's workshop a place to work on the boats, and a house. If there is room, I may have some small farming facilities and the like, but that's just family supplemental stuff so they could have their pumpkin pies and all that. They're near the shoreline so they can get kelp if needed. So a nice cozy spot for everything. Now, 
they're probably spending all their time on carpentry and the like and not much time on fishing but that doesn't matter much because if you're the carpenter at a fishing village I'm sure that your usual mode of payment in receiving anything is fish that's what they're going to trade you you fix their boats they give you a nice supply of fish that sounds like a nice good return for everything now the question is where would they do the building I presume this little covelet here would be a nice suitable spot for building small rowboats but the larger fishing vessels will also need a spot here I was thinking of making a little bit of slip here but I'm not too sure that will really work all that well so more likely they'll probably have to take a fishing boat and tie it up onto here and having a little bit of a key maybe here where you could work on things for the boat and be able to get in and out but that means that the fishing boat will have to be covering up some of this area the small vessels will have to go around it and that's one of the hazards of this now I'm sure you're thinking wait a moment this isn't three meters deep no it's not and they don't want it to be three meters deep because they don't want the fishing vessels to go through here routinely but if you need to be worked on you're gonna take a lot of stuff off and your draft is no longer gonna be three meters it'll probably be closer to two meters or even only one meter so therefore you lighten up the load you hook up a couple of rowboats and you tow it into the location and tie it down and that's when you work on it and then when you're done you tow it back out into the deep enough water to where it could go to a proper port I am though going to deepen much of this down to two meters so that at least you have two meters here as I said I don't want a full three meters because we don't want to encourage the boats to be using this area at least not the larger boats the smaller craft oh yeah that this is their safe area and it's reserved for them but I'm gonna make it two meters deep so that we can bring them here as I said it's mainly a place where you're going to be building the new fishing boats It's where you're going to be repairing ones that need to be fixed and that will be all nice and good so let's get this all cleared out and that way we at least have a location where everything. so I think we have most of the stuff where we need it we have on here we have let's see I think we need five meters here one two three four five there you go a nice safe channel here and this is where we have those fishing vessels over on this left side this is where the small tiny craft will be coming through in and out so this will be our work area maybe over here this could be a they're all small personal area for mm, what is the water like here I think it's going to be brackish yet yeah, obviously it can't be a source of drinking water but they'll probably have to have a well somewhere something like that for drinking water because I cannot see the water here is being truly fresh my goal for today is to have two sections built one will be the house and the other will be the shed where they're going to store a great deal of the wood we'll probably also have some lumber out for seasoning and all that fun stuff so how you try and season wood in this humidity I haven't the slightest idea here are the outlines that we have over here this will be for the storage facility we have double doors coming into here and we'll place our birch here we have room for 
two sets of double chests, probably going up a couple of layers, so plenty of birch for here. And for here, we have room for three double chests across. I will say that we'll have room for maybe two high, maybe three high, so that'll be quite a significant amount of oak that we could store here, but oak is our pr predominant area here. And then here we could have two rows here there where we could put our dark oak, which we get from the nearby dark oak area. And maybe one of the double chests could have a small nod to the other types. Actually, more likely, we'll probably have dark oak on this side. And on here, little bits for any jungle wood, any spruce that we get from the ship. And if they ever import acacia, that could be reserved for the top area. Exotic woods, I suppose they could call it. And this was then will be our storage area. And in the middle, we could have some workbenches here. And this could then be a work area. So it could be an, also an indoor workshop when things are too messy outside to it. But I suspect most of the work is just going to be done out here. So we'll probably have a wooden deck or something like that where they could do a lot of their work. And since it's going to be rainy often, they'll probably do stuff that absolutely needs drier work here. If it doesn't matter, then they may still do it outside if it's not too bad. So that will be for that area. Now here, this will be the house. Not a particularly large house. In fact, you notice that the storage area is almost as large as the house itself. We have a little bit of a foyer here. Probably this will be mainly a kitchen. Probably an upper level, which will have a couple of bedrooms. And that's probably all you're really going to be needing in here. And I would say from a point of view of a small fishing village, that might be considered a pretty large house there. And back here, this is where we are going to have their little pumpkin patch. Maybe a couple of chickens right here and even right here we could throw in some sugar cane right over here because this is all reserved for boats and work and the like but I think this area here could have a little sugar cane on top perhaps a little small spot, spot for some real fishing but other than that I think that covers the grounds. And the first thing I want to do is to make a bunch of chests and start reserving the chest area so that I could get wood moved over to here. And that way when I start chopping down wood all over the place, I have a place to come to and store all that wood so I don't have to keep it in my inventory. There you go. One woodshed. How's it look? Rather plain, yeah. Therefore, we're going to need something to add a little variety to it. And the first thing I want to look at is changing the corners to some sort of stripped log. Now, the question is what type of wood to use there. Now, first, let's try some oak since we're predominantly oak anyway and see how stripped oak looks there uh, I don't think it adds anything to it what happens if I make this birch try that Well, that didn't look too much different. Okay, here, here, here they side by side. All right, the oak is a little bit darker. See, there's a little bit more contrast, but I still want something more different from there. How about dark oak? 
Alright, I have only two dark oak logs here, but I could go and head over to the roofed forest and grab some over there. Let's see how that looks. That doesn't do it for me either. I think we'll just let's go with old style one dot. Oh, <laughs> old school one dot twelve stuff and earlier, and that is just to do that. I think that just works better than the alternatives for this particular case. I think I made this a little bit too tall. I did put in some dark oak in order to make it a little bit more interesting. And I'm not completely satisfied with how it looks, but this is a shed primarily. So therefore, I'm not going to worry about it as much as I would if this were a true house. So I do have to think about what I'm going to do when I do the roof here. It because I'm not completely satisfied with using the slabs here. I thought the stairs was going to be too much of a slant. But this is very definitely a bit higher than I was planning. Well, maybe we need a great deal of height in order to get all the wood we're going to eventually store in here. So I will keep it as is. I may have to someday do some decoration here, but remember, it's a shed. Its primary purpose is to store lots and lots and lots of wood. And I think I'll be able to achieve that purpose with what I have here. That means the next item to attack will be the house. And this I've shifted over a little bit because... I wanted to avoid some clashing with the roof, so I extended the size of the fenced-out area. Shifted the building over a little bit, and I'm hoping that could do everything I need. And once I've decided on that for sure, then I could worry about creating my little chicken pen and a place for the growing pumpkins so that we could have our little pumpkin pie industry here and I've already got a little sugar cane growing here so I have all the ingredients I need for the pumpkin pie there and I also have a little chest here which is where they could do a little bit of fishing and now that I've expanded things there's actually a little bit of room for doing that and I think that will cover everything so next time we are going to build the house here it's going to be a little bit on the cozy side in fact it might even be a little bit smaller than the shed strangely enough but this is more of a storage facility and workplace for for the carpenters so I could see that as being a very very important area for working with here and this is the living area I'll probably have a second floor but I'll have to decide that as I'm building it and we'll see maybe I'll even expand things a little bit more again that's what we'll decide in the next episode of finally plays Minecraft Wellstopia